William Hopefully, your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I welcome you to another Two Hats special of community events. Let's look in and see what's really happening. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining and listening to uh, the latest issue of Lambda Weekly. I'm Laurent Landis, here with the late Patty Fink, who's on time today. And uh, David Taffet is gone for the weekend. I think he's down in Galveston. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. Well, hopefully the weather is nice. It's been a gorgeous weekend here. So uh, he'll be back next week. Uh, we have a great show today. Uh, we're excited to have a lovely, lovely um, guest that I've been uh, wanted to have on for some time. She's the founder and executive director of the Rainbow Roundup Group. She is Kimberly Cantor. Welcome. Thank you. I'm honored to be on the show and, and glad to be here with all y'all today. Wonderful. So tell us, what is Rainbow Roundup? What is it about? So Rainbow Roundup is an LGBTQ families organization. We do monthly events and activities all over the DFW Metroplex. Um, and uh, we share resources and support with our families. You do. Um, how did it start? I mean, you, you found this. What made you even want to do it? Yeah, well, um, really, actually, when I was going through, because uh, we're just a modern, blended family, um, and I do have an ex-wife, and when we were going through our separation or our divorce, there just weren't the resources out there for LGBTQ families. So I just decided back in 2012, well, if we don't have it, then let's do it. Let's let's make something. Mm -hmm. So got the idea in my head, um, Rainbow Roundup. I was Carly, uh, my, my oldest one now, who's 13, uh, was in kindergarten, and we had just done uh, rounding up all the kindergartners and I thought let's round up all the rainbow families and let's just do this so um, so I did and uh, a few years later in 2015 we made it a nonprofit and um, you know again it's just thriving we've got over 2,000 families in the DFW wow. Metroplex. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so what's amazing about this this just started out as a Facebook group yes it did and um, I just try to get the word out there um, we you know we started with our first one of our first events um, we went to the zoo the Dallas Zoo and mm, I mean we had great just, place. we had a huge number of people that were interested and I mean it just it just grew like wildfire I mean it just was it spread we had like it was a hundred then 150 then 300 people and then you know we just grew to like I said over 2,000 families now that that follow us and that are engaged um, we, we recently, you know, did our last camping trip, which we do about every May or so, um, and we had over 200 families come out and wow. celebrate with us wow. and have a fantastic weekend. And we, you know, it varies um, the programs that we do, how many families come out because everyone has busy schedules, but, mm -hmm. um, but they're definitely following us on Facebook. They're um, engaging. We have a discussion group where they can share pediatricians, um, you know, that are LGBTQ friendly. Um, attorneys, schools, areas to live in, I mean, you name it, the questions that they ask about surrogacy, about adoption. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great um, resource tool. Um, I was surprised when I leaned in, full disclosure, I'm part of this group also. Um, there's so many, so much more events that we want to go to, but, you know, just time doesn't always work. Sure. But um, I, when I do look on there, I, I'm so surprised to see how many businesses and services are uh, mentioned or listed mm -hmm. um, to help other LGBT uh, families like okay this is a good one to go to this one may not so it's a great resource tool it is I mean you know we all not only do we want to use businesses that are LGBTQ mm -hmm. friendly but I mean we want to bring our kids to doctors pediatrician dentist you know that, right. that we feel comfortable with we want to go to an OBGYN that's LGBTQ friendly and mm -hmm. you know sometimes it's just overwhelming to think where do you start? I mean, yes, you can see reviews on Yelp and things like that, but right. not specific to what our needs are. Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, um, and two, you know, like forty percent of LGBTQ kids, uh, 
people have kids. Sure. Yeah. That's kind yeah. of true on our, on our, our co host realm. Like, David and I don't have kids, but Laura does. <laughs> yeah. That's true. You know, You're so right. About 40%. About, about 40%. Third. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, about a third. Yeah. So, so it's, I mean, it's, I'm not surprised that there's that such a group. I'm surprised by all the folks who are stepping up to, c- to come participate. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And what I love too is that not only do we cater to LGBTQ families, um, that, you know, our families that are, that, uh, um, identify that way, but they also have children that identify in the spectrum as well in the LGBTQ community and that we provide a safe space for them to engage, interact, and just have a good time. So Yeah, it's a layer you can just take off and not worry about because you're all together. You all right. have the same experiences mm-hmm. of having... Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things that um, I know several of the kids, including my daughter, say that when they go to the events, they just don't have to explain. And, you know, actually, right. I talked about that yesterday when I went to the Les uh, Talk Conference, the first one that we've had here in Dallas that they put on um, their inaugural year. And we have to come out every day, every all the day. time. You know, yeah. it's not just coming out one time. It's coming out every day. And, you know, it's the same thing for our kids as well to share about their it families. Is. It so. is. And, and you're right. I... Or we've tried to befriend or take um, our daughter around other same gender couples um, who have children as much as possible. But even then, you still just sometimes you're not able to. So a group like Rain- Rainbow Roundup is perfect for that. Yeah, it's great when you're available to be able to plug <laughs> mm-hmm. into you know to our opportunities that we have. Absolutely. So when we do, the, the events that we have gone to. You know, it's so great. Uh, you start, start talking to people immediately, and um, where are you from? And so far, when I've met people, there's people from everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's like we are really everywhere. We are. I mean, we have people that come in from. Gosh, I mean, we have people that follow us from Oklahoma that drive in for some of our events because they really? want to be a part of yeah. it. But I mean, we have people that live out in Denison and Sherman. I mean, we have people in Fort Worth, and I mean, all over the place. It's, all over it's the pretty place. great. Hey, unfortunately, we don't have. I don't know if it's unfortunate or not, but we don't have a. Uh, we don't have like a neighborhood for families for the most part. But we're we're all we're we're everywhere. We are everywhere, and yeah. that's what's great. I think that's wonderful yeah. that we're just you know we're doing everything that all the other families are doing. We're being visible with our you know with our families, um, and so that's why it's so fantastic that you know we have this opportunity and and thank you to you all for you know letting us share as well because the more oh, people course. we reach the more families you know that can get engaged and and receive the resources and support and um something we haven't tapped on yet is that we are black tie dinner beneficiaries you are and um we're so incredibly appreciative thankful grateful everything because i mean without that support i mean we couldn't put on the amazing programming right. that we are able to put on the educational the social events that we're able to do get our our media marketing out there as well so. yeah this is the 37th annual black tie dinner yeah uh, it's going to be the first annual black tie dinner for Laron and danny so Yay, <laughs> wow so good for you we've never been so we're so <laughs> excited to go and what what and, a great one to go to yeah, Beto yeah. come in Beto and it's going to be a lot of fun we're going to all yeah. be fired up and we're going to be at the rainbow awesome. roundup table yeah so we're so excited we're pleased to have you guys oh thank and, you and we have um, an awesome number. We have 17 tables that we're going to have this year for Rainbow Roundup. I mean, wow. look at the love and the support. It's really amazing and incredible. Um, we've had some businesses like Allstate and a few other businesses, um, Dallas Voice as well, um, that are sponsoring like some half tables, some mm-hmm. two tables, some one table. Um, and then we have about 10 tables that are just Rainbow Roundup families, which is amazing. Yeah, gonna be that's going to be amazing. That's so awesome. I think one of my most memorable Black Ties dinners was the one, was the second one where um, uh, former governor, the late former governor, Ann Richards, came and, you know, the, the big auction. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. The auction is just, you know, blow you out. Um, and she, she got to the to the podium and was talking and said, um, I just love y'all's little garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, that's too funny. So bring your bring your checkbook. Bring, yeah, sorry, bring your checkbook. Yeah, we've got a lot of amazing um, artists around our our community that are LGBTQ friendly that have donated paintings for us um, to put in the silent auction. So we're we're very excited to see you know the success of the whole event and the whole night. It's right. going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a fabulous night. With the families um, that you've met or that you meet um, as part of Rainbow Roundup, is there, 
what's interesting is that all these families are made are come to be in different ways through adoption, surrogacy, um, um, donors, whatever. Is there one that seems to be the most that you know of? No, I mean, honestly, I think there's been a really big gaby boom, so to say, in mm-hmm. the last, gosh, I'd say like 10 years or so, you know, um, and I mean, especially with um, having the opportunity to be able to go to like LGBTQ friendly uh, fertility specialists. And we have several that are sponsors, you know, that that we really appreciate. Um, So having those options there and just having the educational support that's out there um, for us and sharing these resources and stuff. I mean, we're seeing all kinds. I mean, I I sat on a panel with GALA, which is the Gay and Lesbian Alliance um, there in North Texas. Mm -hmm. And we we talked about the different ways to make a family. And we do this often um, with other organizations as well where we try to get the word out. Um, and, I mean, we've talked about surrogacy. We've talked about, like you said, the IVF um, aspect of it. Um, we've done. We've talked about the IUI, the adoption options. Um, we've got, you know, a lot of people within the discussion group even um, that share some. It's, it's great because we think there's really not those options out there, and there are options out there. There are. Yeah. And do you have couples who are part of who want to join Rainbow Roundup that don't have kids yet. Yeah, in fact, I, I encourage them if they're thinking about having kids or thinking about starting a family, it's mm-hmm. a perfect way, you know, especially to join into the discussion group um, that we have. It's a closed group, but you just have to request to be added into it. Um, I definitely encourage, you know, young couples or couples that are looking to adopt or have um, kids, not not only young, I mean, whoever wants to right. <laughs> uh, bring in children to their lives, I, I definitely encourage them to get into our discussion group because it's a great safe place for people to share information and say you know what what adoption agencies you know have you used or you know if you're if you're adopting or if you're trying to you know adopt um, you know outside of like an agency if you want to go with a surrogate things like that I mean they can ask all those questions openly and freely and and really get a lot of resources so it's, it's great I saw a young young couple just recently um, that had posted about their journey and then they posted again just recently you may have seen it but they posted again and, and gave an update which is great so yes, I mean it's yes. exciting to I see those updates it's wonderful to see the the second parent adoptions when they share pictures about you know their family their gotcha days and everything yeah yeah and that that, that oh that would have been so helpful 10 years ago when yeah. we were thinking of starting a family yeah, totally. because even though we knew we weren't the only ones there wasn't any group to answer questions about the options and you we thought our options were limited and you're right there are actually many options yeah uh, so you kind of like you're out in the wilderness doing this kind of thing alone yeah um and it, it worked out it worked out perfect sure but sure. um to have a group to have gone to and said, "Hey, here are some of your options. Here what might here might be some of the costs you incur. You right. may not incur. Um, yeah, that, that's yeah. Great. What are the challenges and exactly. successes and everything that they've been through? It's, mm-hmm. it's always nice to be able to share that and, and know what that journey kind of might look like. I know everyone has their own individual experiences, but exactly. Right. I mean, you know, like I said, I, I started my family, my daughters." now 13 almost 14 and you know and then i have an eight-year-old as well and you know like i said there just weren't the resources out there to ask i mean Mm -hmm. we were on our own to just try to figure it out and honestly i would not um go to the same fertility you know doctor that i went to for you know for our daughters that we would now because now we have options and now we know right um because even when i did that back then we got to talk about the psychological damage that we we would potentially be doing yeah so i never i would never use that doctor again you know um but but now we have incredible you know options and resources out there for doctors and um you definitely look at our our rainbow roundup sponsors get on our our facebook page and see, you know, and you can definitely join into our discussion group and we can share those and let you know who they are. Wow, what a difference does 15 years make? Yeah, totally. It's yeah. crazy. Do you, um, do you have families that are, say, fostering kids? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. At every age. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why I said we've got 
all a whole mix you know like everything um you know if you want to foster to adopt or you know if you're looking just straight adoption so yeah and i mean people share their journeys and share their struggles um i do know a couple here right now that's going through the foster to adopt and and my heart goes out to them so um, yeah yes, i know that's that's got to be really hard so yeah, yeah but, but it so takes needed. a very special yes it takes a very special couple very special person to do that and it is so needed absolutely it is. and our community has really over the decades stepped up in Texas, and there's so many kids in need. Um, it, it really stepped up and and taken in kids that, that need good foster homes and mm-hmm. um, stability and, and love. Yeah, Definitely. absolutely. And since uh, since marriage equality is legal now, and adoption, well, it's, the adoption has never not been legal in Texas for same sex couples, but it was a really challenge to get it through um, for a couple to adopt. Um, but now that all that is legal, have you seen an uptick or just more people that you know of or see who's willing to even venture in that area? Right. I think so. Um, but I also think that it's so important for people to know um, that it's still necessary. It's still needed to do the second parent adoptions, um, even is. for, you know, individuals that are having babies, you know, especially lesbian couples, um, because it is a little bit less challenging, I'd say, you know, for lesbian couples. Um, and so they do have to know that it's still so important, um, you know, just getting your name and just, just being married and just putting the name on the birth certificate as the other parent is not going to be enough in court. You know, not necessarily, not at right. this day and, you know, age yet. We're just not quite there. And so it's, it's so important to know, um, you know, some of this information. That's another reason why it's great to share this information with our families. Absolutely. And just for our, our listeners, she knows what she's talking about. She is married to an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're, we're actually really close to a break, so why don't we go ahead and take that, and when we come back, we'll have more with um, the executive director and founder of Rainbow Roundup, Kimberly Cantor. This is Rollins Gellin, and I'm listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3, and darn glad to be doing it. And welcome back to Lambda Weekly. I'm Laurel Lane, just here with the lady Patty Fink. And our guest today is Kimberly Kentor from Rainbow Roundup. And just before the break, you know, we were talking about adoption, surrogacy, and all the other ways that same-sex couples um, make their families. And uh, I, I, I did jokingly say that she knew what she was talking about because her wife is an attorney. Um, I was joking, but I'm serious. Her wife really is an attorney, and she happens to be uh, congressional district candidate Lori Birch. Yes. So right. you've been really busy with not only all this rainbow stuff, but a campaign. Yes, absolutely. We, you know, we were so excited. I knew, you know, when she announced that she was going to run for U.S. Congress. Um, I'm just behind her all the way. I, she's just incredible. She's amazing. And um, I just know whatever it takes. Um, I mean, she'll just do a great job representing us. We the people. We need people that are not only you know, allies, um, but are of us and will represent us as well. I mean, we do need allies too, but it's just, it's just incredible. She's, she's wonderful. And we'll see where it goes here on November 6th. It's coming up. It's coming up soon. The countdown is out. Get on, get out the vote. Let's see this. Well, she won her primary and is on the ballot and um, you can find it if, when you get to the polling place, because everyone out there is going to go vote. Absolutely. So if you're in Collin County, get out the vote and, you know, look for Lori Birch for U.S. Congress, Democrat. And, and uh, we're, we're, uh, Patty and I are definitely going to talk about uh, voting um, issues uh, more towards the end of the hour. But just one item that you and I were talking about before the show, um, before the show, Kimberly said, the hours were different this week. I thought the polls were open from 7 to 7. Was that yeah. just in Dallas County? Oh, oh but they are. They're, all, they're open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. in Dallas County. Every single day except today. Except for today. Yeah. One day. It, Collin County. It is different in Collin County. Yeah, this last week they were uh, 8 to 5, but next week it is 7 to 7, and we are still, the polls are still open today until 6 o'clock p.m. today. Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so go vote. Yeah. Go vote. In Collin County or Dallas County, wherever <laughs> yeah, you right. live, go vote. Wherever. Yes. Go vote. Um, one of the things, you know, you did mention at uh, Rainbow Roundup does, you all do something different every month. And some of these places are actual facilities like the zoo, like, you know, I forgot the name of it, where we go swimming. Uh, that's really fun. Yeah. Um, how receptive have these different facilities and companies been to 
the rainbow round up when you even present, hey, yeah. we're coming. I mean, that is a thing. You know, I mean, that is something that we have to consider when mm -hmm. we think about new places to go. I mean, even, you know, when, let's, for example, uh, the summer we had a change in plans because of the weather, it being too hot, obviously. So we, we switched gears and, and changed our event to an indoor um, trampoline place, you know, and those are things that we have to consider and make sure that we're absolutely, you know, not, not tolerated, accepted and welcomed and, you know, and, and wanted to be there. So it's right. very important in considering those places that we, we choose and select. And, and um, even some of our events, we actually do provide off duty police officers. We don't, you know, right. let everyone know that, but we do, you know, we select ones that we think are important just because, you know, the safety of our families and, and ourselves is, is the most important thing. So. But but none of the groups, uh, none of the places that you all who even contacted, have said no or we don't ha have they? No, I mean we've we've been very very blessed, Good. very lucky in the places that we've hear. gone. And um, I mean we're even going to have an event uh, today uh, that's play taking place at Central Market um, off of. Uh, George Bush and Coit Road um, in Plano, and they've just been very welcoming to us uh, the last several years that we go. We're going to have Pumpkin Palooza today where they can come and uh, get great food, prizes, decorate pumpkins. It's going to be a lot of fun today. Come dressed up in your, your costumes for prizes. And um, I just went, I just went, it has such a great point, and I'm <laughs> It'll come back. It happens. Yeah. It'll come back. Um, just about places. We were talking about places that are, you know, LGBTQ friendly and everything. And oh, yeah. I remember what it is. Okay. Um, do you have businesses? Like if businesses are listening out there, someone owns a business, could they contact you on your page? Yeah, and, absolutely. And say, hey, come do an event at, my, at our location. Yeah, we, have, we, we'd we love, whatever. We'd love to have businesses come to us and contact us. We also love it when they want to become sponsors <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, it's great to be Black Tie Dinner beneficiaries, but we also have to, you know, try to bring in additional income to support our our planning and our programming that we have. So, um, but yes, absolutely. We welcome that. They can contact us through our Facebook page or they can email us at um, info at rrup.org. So. Rrupr.org. Yeah. Okay. Um, our camping trip every year, we've been going to, it could change, but we've been going to Yogi Bear's uh, Jellystone Park, and we had a lot of fun with it, um, especially this last year. Even though it was rainy, we, we rented um, the arcade space that was open just to our families, which was just, it's wonderful. I mean, we were able to have face painter inside there and really connect with our families and have and a good time. And best kids. <laughs> yes. Um, and then actually speaking of picnics, we, we partnered with... Um, let's see here, Quality Texas, mm -hmm. and um, we like to partner with other organizations as well, and we partnered with um, now uh, transition to a nonprofit, so it's uh, Trans Kids and Families of Texas, so we did that with Equality Texas to have um, the International Family Equality Day this last, uh, I guess it was, first weekend in May that we had, um, and we'll continue, we hope to continue to partner with them and do that event again in the future, but um, but we really we really enjoy partnering with other organizations because it's a great way for you know our families to learn about those other organizations, but also for those organizations to learn about us. You mentioned the trans group. Um, do you have many or even some trans parents as part of the group? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we, we definitely do. And um, again, that's just another thing that we just, again, provide a safe space for all families to engage and connect. And we also welcome our allies to join us as well. Oh, wonderful. Uh, you know, I, I do have um, some, I'm going to share some information. I'm not going to share names or anything, but I do know that, you know, as you know, m my one friend that I'm, um, going to share about or whatever they they have had a difficult time attending the event sometimes just because of their their own comfort levels you know where they are and everything mm -hmm. and that transitioning with their families and stuff and um but it's wonderful to see them come back out and start attending our events and they know it's a safe place i mean it is it's the best environment you know for it them is. to come out with their families and and be true to themselves oh that's so, wonderful yeah. i have noticed there are overwhelmingly more moms than dads yeah, uh, and I and are, are that starting to come more? Or I'm glad you that want, you bring that. Well, why is that? Yeah, I mean, I'm, why is that? I don't know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we we've tried to do some. Um, 
it seems like there's some events that they just tend to come to more. Um, mm-hmm. The fathers, the dads, um, definitely the pool party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we see them at the pool party. Uh-huh. Um, the camping trip, actually, last year we had quite a few dad families, which oh, was good. wonderful. Um, we've seen them come out to our uh, family pride zone a lot and everything, too. So, I mean, we've we've actually, we're trying to engage more dad families. Um, they're very involved. It's wonderful to, to see in the discussion group when um, dads bring up questions or or things they want you know to discuss or share or get resources on um they they all chime in it's great to see the support but i would love to see more dad families coming to our events and it starts with you you know and your friends and bringing more but um, get on it laron yeah. yeah i do need to go more yes. but no i mean it's it's hard with schedules and everything it but is. i mean but we do see we do see a lot more dad families that are joining us and i mean again we we're open to all we want everyone to come i mean it it's is. a it's a great place it's a great um, it's a lot of fun, and the kids really enjoy it. And again, it's it's not just about us; it's about the kids, you know, right. and them connecting with their friends and stuff as well. So. Right. Right. <laughs> we do. Josh we, just said, we "Say we it again." Do. Hold on. <laughs> do y'all do any sporting events? Maybe Laron would go for that. <laughs> yeah. No, we do actually. Um, the last several years, we've gone to the Rough Riders um, for a game oh. early on in the summer, and that's a lot of fun because the kids get to go down. We always pick a night that they get to go down on the field, and they see the fireworks after as well. So that's fun. We get discounted tickets. Um, we we've done the last two, I guess, last year for sure, and I think the year before. Before we did um, the Pride Night at the Dallas Wings game, which is a lot of fun and yeah. very family friendly as well. Um, and we're absolutely, you know, open in the Wings. Uh, we're appreciative they gave us a, a package for Black Tie Dinner this year as well. Oh, but, awesome! Yeah, so we definitely nice. want to connect with them um, some more. And yeah, no, we we change it up. I mean, with having a monthly event every month, we we do a lot of activities and events all over, and we try to move our events not only in the Dallas area, but we go to the Fort Worth area, and we also do things in the North Texas area as well. Awesome. You mentioned the family zone, uh, family prize zone. Tell it, tell it, audience, what is, what is that? Yeah, so, I mean, we're just so excited to be a part, um, and now we, you know, we're, we're pretty branded with them now, which is fantastic um, that we've got some seed money to be able to continue the this, but um, we have a zone that's totally zoned off. It's um, it's even fenced off actually within the Pride Festival, um, where we have a safe space for families to engage and, and have a good time. We've got face painters that come out. We had a choo choo train this last year. We had entertainment. Um, we had a, a young girls band, the Micro Chicks, come out and play. We had oh um, yeah, yeah. We had um, we know them. <laughs> Dennis Lee Productions that comes out the last several years for us that puts on um, puppeteers. The the ventriloquist, he's amazing. He's in our community. Um, we've got. Uh, let's see here. We've got the critter guy that comes out and shares his animals and everything. So, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, the kids have a lot of fun. We've got bounce houses. You know, I mean, we've got crafts and all the vendors that come out that are LGBTQ friendly. They're handing out candies and, and prizes and things like that as well. So it's it's a great day and we're looking it forward is. to it, it again. And I think they may be moving it up this year. So we'll we'll find out and hear more. We'll see you know when, when and where it's going to be this year. There'll be definitely some changes. So stay tuned for the information. Cool. All right. So are there any things that the group hasn't done yet that you want to do? Well, um, there's a lot of things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, obviously things cost money. So, you know, and we're very excited for the turnout that we're going to have for Black Tie this year mm-hmm. because that will only benefit our organization. And we're going to continue doing the things that we're doing great with our sponsorship. Um, but, you know, we definitely look forward to, as we're growing, to have um, volunteer appreciation um, that we'll have, sponsor appreciation. I mean, we'd love to have um, some fundraising events for our organization as well, some independent ones ourselves that we like to host. Uh, we talked about doing uh, some kind of race, uh, 5K race as well. Oh, that would run. be fun. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we do have a lot of a lot of thoughts and ideas in You'll the works. You'll definitely but get that, a lot of dash to that. Yes, but that, that costs money. It so, cost you know, money. we do take donations. Um, if you're interested, you can click on our, our link on Facebook or, you know, online on rrup.org. Um, and you can have like a 0.0k 
one for people to just watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we can have a sleep in where you know oh, come you can on, just. Fatty, you don't want to go jogging with <laughs> you me. You can just get a shirt. So yeah, no, we've got great ideas of things that we love to do, but obviously ideas, you know, sometimes tend to cost money and everything. Thank you. So, Thank you. Um, but we we do have a lot of things in the work. I'm excited. Um, coming up in November, uh, before the holidays, we'll have our board retreat where we'll plan out our our years of events oh, okay. that we'll have upcoming. So excited to you know to meet with the board and really sit down and you know hash out what it is that that we want to do in the upcoming year um we've got upcoming we haven't posted it yet but we'll post the details soon about our holiday party but last year it was a huge success we did kind of a polar express theme and we had um the kids wear their pajamas and we oh, had awesome. a movie playing the polar express movie playing and then we had crafting and then we had a like a potluck kind of thing that we did as well and we had a choo-choo train so nice. um, so we're hoping to do something similar to that again t- this year but only bigger and better now, do you does your group participate like in the the Equality Texas Family um, or the Advocacy Days when the legislation is in session? We do share all that information. It is harder, you know, for yeah. our families to get there and go and take the buses and everything. But we do share all those events. We partner with the different organizations and share widely the information, definitely. And because that's um, such a powerful experience. Not, not just for LGBTQ people and parents and kids, but for lawmakers. I think that's so important for them to see our families. Absolutely. If they've been, if they have, if we leave it to their imagination, um, we may not fare very well in yeah. what they believe our families are like. You know, yeah. so I think well, that's Patty, really... you may just have a new idea for us. Maybe we just <laughs> run a bus, right? <laughs> no, I think I think you're right, Patty. I, th- I think just for the larger or the general population, period. A lot of them don't know what a same gender family even looks like. You know, they hear about it, but Mm -hmm. they don't actually see it. So that's a really good point. Yeah. And when people get to know us and know who Mm -hmm. we are and everything, we're changing hearts and minds. Absolutely. And that's what's most important. Absolutely. Being visible. A lot of us um, who are part of uh, Rainbow Roundup have children who, small children, um, I, I don't, I don't want to say that uh, high school children aren't important, but I think it might be particularly more, uh, particularly more difficult or challenging for the little ones um, if they encounter anything in school um, about having same-sex parents. How or does the Rainbow Roundup involve themselves with schools, or do you get, get any calls from schools or? Um, we've signed on to some different petitions and such, but I know um, Gala, who, who I've mentioned earlier, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance group does um, training throughout the North Texas area for schools. Awesome. Um, I know HRC is working on the Welcoming Schools um, program, and then of course Equality Texas as well. So, um, so you know, we we tend to to partner up with them um, and support them in their cause and their efforts. Right. So. And, you know, and I've met a, a, a lot of the parents live in Plano conservative Plano and I always ask how's it how your children doing in school and they say fine yeah well you no know we problems. live in Plano you live in Plano <laughs> we What's live in Plano like we love kids? it and we're so happy where we are and um, you know they have in fact Lori was a part of that for the non-discrimination act you know that they had passed a while back Correct. Mm-hmm. yeah and um, what, what's wonderful is uh, what, I, I'm just trying to think now where where I was going with that before the non-discrimination. Oh, that one in every five families is LGBTQ um, in Plano. In Plano. In, wow. Yeah, in the North Texas area. So it's growing. And, I that mean, is like, we really see it. high. Yeah, absolutely. And we see it in our organization. We see it in our events. We see our families that are coming to our events and, and where they are and just, you know. Um, we, we are actually thinking about starting up something, um, some kind of a Rainbow Families connection um, within our discussion group where mm-hmm. We will have uh, different, um, let's say, counties, you know, that are represented. So the Dallas County, the Collin County, the, you know, the um, Tarrant County, things like that, um, Mm -hmm. where we'll have different areas that will be hosting maybe quarterly events um, so that we have more opportunity for those families to connect um, in an easier way for families to engage like for yourself, you know, in certain areas and stuff as well. So we're, we're working towards all these great new ideas. um, But we we are a volunteer based. Um, There's no paid staff at this time or anything for our organization.
organization. So definitely if you're interested in volunteering or getting involved, you know, we can certainly use the help. We've got wonderful um, ideas and, and, and things that we'd like to push out there, but it, it will take a little bit of time. So, now, Do you need volunteers for black tie? Yeah, we can, we can absolutely use volunteers. We're still um, engaging with people to sign up for some hours. Um, we are required to have a minimum number of hours of volunteers, and we'd love to have your support. And That's they go cool. to what website to find out about that? Yeah, they can, um, they can message through the Rainbow Roundup Facebook page, the, the public Facebook page, um, and we would absolutely link them up and, and get them um, signed up. Or they can email me um, at the info at rrup.org. Okay. I remember years ago, you know, like the late 90s and mm -hmm. 2000s and, and maybe even into the late 2000s, um, we, you know, I get calls from different media around North Texas, t TV stations, newspapers, radio, um, looking for an, a gay parent to talk about wow. an issue that was in the news and or in, in in the legislature or whatever and you know we would scramble and we'd always go to the same basically the same three couples <laughs> <laughs> you know because that it's like because you don't know anybody else exactly. and there was no group like yours and can you imagine now if, if somebody called me today i would just call kimberly and say they, they, yeah Find, find somebody who can be available at 2.30 <laughs> yeah, on Friday. Exactly. And, Absolutely. You know, it's so easy. Uh, we've, we've got yeah, many to choose times. from. You probably have like, you know, dozens and dozens of people clamoring. Say, I'll do it. I'll do yeah. it. Right. We, right. we definitely have a lot of people that reach out to us for those reasons, you know, for certain specifics that they need. And you're happy to, you know, connect families so, That's so cool. they can share their stories. Wow. That's so cool. It, this, the, the progress we've made in our community and the, the connection that we've made in our community is just amazing. And it's because of your hard work and, and you. groups like yours. Absolutely. Well, I couldn't do it. It takes a village, and I couldn't do it without, you know, my board members, the the fantastic work that they do and the hours and time that they put into it and um, just the families that show up and want to be visible. That's that's just so awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know you got to go. So thank you so much, Kimberly, for joining us. Thank, thank, you, thank you guys so much. so much for having me. You'll have to come back and come Please back again. Do. Yeah, Please love do. that. Thank you. And anyway, I will see you, if not to this later on in a couple hours, I'll definitely see you at Black Tie. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. All All right. You'll have to take a picture of them because we got to see them in their taxes. Are you yeah. going to go yeah. taxes? Yeah. 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 Wow. We gotta go get and, that. Yeah. and don't forget to get out and vote. That's yes. right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Kimberly. Thank you. Hi, this is Valetta Lil, and I listen to Langley Weekly. I hope that you will, too. And welcome back to Lambda Weekly. That was our guest for today, Kimberly Cantor. Thank you so much. We're, we were so glad to have her on. Um, she had to go. She had to go. Um, very, very busy time for her. Um, this week was uh, voting week. and Well, the first week of early voting. And if you haven't already voted, make sure you pay attention to your ballot. And to tell us more about what I'm talking about, we have our uh, voting election extraordinaire, Patty Fink, to tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Well, there, there were issues this week. Um, uh, this is the, the, the bad news part, is that mm -hmm. there, there have been issues with the East Slate uh, type of voting machine. And, and it, what is that? Because I don't think... I don't know if mine was that or not. Um, that, Dallas County uses them. Okay, you. It's like you punch, like the screen, and right. And then okay. there's a there's a scroll wheel. Um, yes. As well. Okay. That's right. And uh, what's been happening is when people have gone to there's a you know it's all about where is the cursor right now, mm -hmm. and I usually vote on election day because I'm an election judge. So I use on election day in Dallas County we use paper. That's the right. paper ballot, and you darken your oval and put it in the, the optical scanner machine. Mm -hmm. But for early voting, it's all the the East Light stuff. And so, if your cursor, if you're if you're voting, say a straight party ticket, and your cursor had already advanced when you made that selection, it's possible that it would um, the first thing on the ballot, which is the the Beto O'Rourke Ted mm -hmm. Cruz race, it could move your selection. Correct. And Either so, way. Right. Either way. And so what's critically important is, um, is just pay attention and scroll back through every single screen right, right. and make sure that the selection is what you wanted. Right. So even though you're selecting, say, a straight party ticket, go th scroll through the entire ballot before you hit that vote button 
and make sure that your ballot is what you want it to be, and right. then hit the vote, vote button. And it, correct me if I'm wrong, but that that's where the issue seems to be happening. People who are voting straight party ticket, and I'm te- no, I'm not telling people to uh, not straight party ticket right. at all. Um, but that seems to be where the issue was falling. Um, that I saw several snapshots. Um, had people who voted straight party ticket for the Democrats, and then when they got to the to the review page, it had Ted Cruz on there. So, what is happening when these people are complaining to the election staff? Um, they're just basically instructing them to review their ballot. And, and can you go back and change it? You can before you hit the before button. you hit the voting. Yes, before you hit the vote button, go go back and look at every single page. And even if you're not voting a straight party ticket, go back and review. Absolutely. Every single page that is that it's marked like you want it. Um, and we do that when we do a paper thing. We, we mark what we want and we do all the sides mm-hmm. and maybe it's two ballots, um, you know, two pages or two physical pieces of paper. And you just you need to go back and look. Did right. I do that? What I what I want. And you can, you know, in the paper world, you can have a mutilated ballot and you can you have up to three. So if you make a mistake or go, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I don't want to. I, that's not how I want to vote. You can get another ballot. You can get it. You can go until you get it right. And you just got to remember to do that and and be certain before you hit the vote button when you're doing it electronically. Yeah. So I voted this Friday, and I I never straight party vote. Um, but yeah, you're right. I I still went through all my selections and made sure, and and they were fine. But yeah, you just really need to review and. Don't hit the vote button, and if you see that there is wrong, you can go back on this this computer screen, right. and it'll let you fix it. Yeah, scroll back up and and go and and correct it. And correct it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, and that's just so important, whether you're voting a straight party ticket or not, to go back and review your selections and make sure that they're exactly like you want them, and then that's when you hit the vote button to submit your your ballot. And is the legislature aware of this problem? Um, the Attorney General's Attorney office. General's office. Yes, absolutely. They put out an advisory, basically saying that just you know be be careful. This is the way it operates. But it's bad. It's bad design if that many people. Um, absolutely. You know, it's it's just. And I I work in software. It's mm-hmm. bad design. It's bad design. Yeah, mm. just not good. And it's probably a time now when when most counties who've been on electronic equipment for. You know, a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe they need to look at investing in some new equipment that has much better design that can afford the user, the voter, uh, um, more confidence. Right. And yeah, you know, that's and, and that's the thing, yeah. um, because whoever doesn't win for whatever seat, um, they can start. You know, saying this is probably why. You know, it, it, it it's that. It, it brings us confidence, you're right, into uh, the voters actually going out to vote. Right. If they think the system is rigged. Right. And so it's, it's, that's why it's really, really important to overcome, you know, the, the vendor's um, bad design. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, really important to, to, to vote either way. And why, or is there a law as to why these machines are used for early voting and only paper voting is used for no. the regular election? No. Hmm. And in fact, in in a place, let's say like Travis County, Texas, mm-hmm. which is home of Austin, mm-hmm. capital, um, the early voting locations are electronic. And, the, and so the great thing about the electronic thing is that you can you can go anywhere, and we have what we call ballot styles. So I live where I live. I mm-hmm. have a certain combination of people I can vote for because of where I live. Right. And you have a completely different set on your ballot. And Josh, you probably have another completely different set mm-hmm. of people that you you can vote for because we all live in different places. Right. And so we're going to vote differently for House Representative, Texas House, U.S. House, all those things. And so that's the ballot style. What is the combination of people that you would be allowed to vote for, right, that, that would represent you? So the electronic ballot machines, um, the voting machines allow um, – the county elections department to define those ballot styles electronically mm-hmm. and as you come in you can go to any machine because you're going to get your you're able to get your ballot style there right i, I see what you're so, saying yeah. but on election day um, we could still use those and in travis county what they do is they have 
these voting centers all over the county. You can mm-hmm. go anywhere and early vote, right? Anywhere. And it's the same thing on Election Day. Okay. So on Election Day, you can go to any of these centers and you can vote. They don't, they don't isolate them to each and every precinct. Gotcha. And so that could be one solution going forward, assuming we have great machines. Right. <laughs> and, right. And, and, and does having these machines also, um, I don't want to say completely uh, wipe it out, but it makes the possibility of voter fraud. Well, there's a difference between voter fraud and election fraud. Um, if uh, if the voter's doing something wrong or malicious, that's voter fraud. Oh, I, I guess election fraud. Yeah, like elect- somebody, you go and vote, and I know you don't early vote, but let's say you did an early vote, and then somebody else stole your identity, and they show up and say, I'm Patty Fink. Couldn't the computer already so- see? Patty Fink has already voted. Oh, sure. Okay, so and yeah. And we do the same thing in, for, with paper. You know, we look you up in the poll book, and if it's printed that you've already voted, then we don't let you vote again. Gotcha. So that yeah. prevents that, too. Right. right. So, okay. So, okay. but, you know, if we went to a place where, like Travis County, where you could vote anywhere in the county on Election Day, mm-hmm. um, you know, who knows what the turnout might be. But speaking of turnout, what... A crazy time across the country. Across, across the, the country. country. Yeah. Georgia is blowing out. They're blowing out every record in the past. But the early voting, Texas is doing it. Right. And but, but particularly Georgia, because <laughs> Georgia has had some of the most um, polling places closed down in the country. Yes. So talk about voter suppression and they're still turning out. That's that's encouraging. It is. That it's is very encouraging. encouraging. And like, a federal judge ruled that those 53,000 voter registrations mm-hmm. that the Secretary of yes. the, the State, Secretary of State, uh, was sitting on, saying that, you know, they have to match exactly. A uh, federal judge threw that out and said, no, they must be counted. Good. Good. Um, and it, they have an odd situation, and maybe we can write a law in Texas that, um, that prevents this from ever happening here. But their Secretary of State in Georgia who is in charge of the all of the elections in the mm-hmm. state, is um, is in charge of his own election. He's running for governor. And so the shenanigans that have been happening, like sitting on 53,000 votes, uh, uh, mail-in ballots, because the, they're going to check their registrations and make sure that their names match exactly, which I my understanding is that that's not the law in Georgia and why it was thrown out. He's in charge of his own election. And so all of this, we're going to close these polling locations. It's mm-hmm. very self-serving. Very, you know, that's that's just not even the hint of, of fairness <laughs> when you're <laughs> in charge all. of your election and you're you're affecting you're de- you're deliberately proactively going out there and trying to suppress the vote. Wow, that's that's just that's just wrong. Wow, and so um, maybe we can prevent that in Texas. Absolutely, not that you know whoever our Secretary of State is in one term might run for some other office, but got to you know you got to keep confidence in the polls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, Georgia has the chance to make history. Uh, Stacey it, Abrams. Stacey Abrams. She, if she wins, she would be the first African American female to be governor anywhere in the U.S. That's right. Anywhere. That's right. So that would be be a nice first. So, yeah. And it's it's kind of another first that happened um, in, in recent days has been in the state of Oregon, what where there? Governor Kate Brown, who is an openly LGBT governor, she's bi- she's openly bisexual. Mm-hmm. Uh, she just signed a bill that says if you're eligible to vote in the state of Oregon, you're automatically registered. If you do not want to be a registered voter in Oregon, you have to opt out. Oh, which yeah. is a really I cool like thing. like that. That's a really cool I thing. I like that. So that eligible, puts everybody in the system. Right. Yeah. Everybody's eligible to vote yeah. because, because you're there. You're there. So, I like that. Yeah. That, that's, that's the way it should be. Yeah, it's exciting. And, yeah. you know, places like Australia, actually, it's a law, it's a law that you must you, vote. You have they to can vote. find you. Right. <laughs> okay. you, you get penalized if you don't, if yeah. you don't vote. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we should do that here in this country, but it would be nice if we could have, because that means they have like a 99% turnout rate. You right. have to vote. It's the law. So you're part of a democracy. You need to be, get, you need to, get yeah. your butt over it's here. Your vote, right? yeah, I, I guess that there's just like, like you have to pay taxes over here. Well, you have to vote over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think one of the, the exciting pieces of news this week is is in Dallas County. And well, okay. everywhere, if you've been watching the news and, and watching the voter turnout everywhere. But as of 5 o'clock yesterday, 
on Saturday, mm-hmm. um, Dallas County surpassed our early voting total for the 2016 presidential election. Not wow. just the 2014 midterms, which we passed earlier in the week. Wow. We have surpassed the the 2016 presidential early vote total. Total. Wow. On day six. And we still have six more days. Yeah, that that's just unheard of. You know, yeah. for the show, uh, me, Josh, and Pat, I mean, and Kimberly were talking, and, you know, I've never, since I've turned 18, I've never missed a presidential election. But I have missed a few midterms. Um but I think people are starting to get it now that those are just as important. Yeah, if not more. If not more, absolutely. Right. So right. I guess that's the difference, when, you know. And I've seen when I went to go vote Friday, I don't know if all, all election places do this, uh, polling places, but there were two um, young folks in there. And I, I think one was 18, maybe one was 19. They were very young. And they... Um, it, the lady who was, you know, checking them in, she goes, we have a first time voter. And everybody started clapping. I did that at my point. Do you? Yes. Okay. She did it. So it was twice that they did it. I was like, oh, that's really cool. So the young folks are coming out. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and that's encouraging. I do that with a with a new citizen. Oh. And with, uh, that's, they're, they're still a first time voter. That's awesome. Um, and then the, the young people that, um, you know, that are coming out for the first time. And hopefully they make a lifelong habit of... Right. Of you know voting in every election, mm-hmm. which would be very cool. That would be very cool. Um, one quick um, yeah, what else, down what else for us. Um, there were there have been a series of postcards sent out by Equality Texas this week that are that are clear mis- misprints because the information is wrong. So what what, what does it say? Um, there's a listing of candidates and how they stand on issues and mm-hmm. all of the places where there are question marks. Mm-hmm. Um, for um, endorsed candidates by the Texas Equity Pack, which is Equality Texas's pack, they're just wrong. Uh, I got one in my district that said there was a question mark for John Turner, mm-hmm. who's running in my district, um, based uh, on the issues of uh, license to discriminate laws, and he is against those. He's he's for non discrimination ordinances, which is, they have a question mark. They have on a it. question mark next to his and name. Those are wrong. Julie Johnson, running in House District 114, who's been on the show. Yes, she has. Um, the postcard going out to constituents from Equality Texas to those to that district. Mm-hmm. Um, they also have question marks on her, and she's check marks all the way. She should be check marks all the way. Absolutely. And the same with with Mike Collier, running for lieutenant governor. Uh, they also endorsed him, but they've got a question mark on him. That should be a check mark, and so I don't. I, they're investigating what's what's happened, but it's, yeah. but it's but it's just wrong. So so if you get the card, just ignore it. You know. Um, he, wow. So, so how do you know what someone? So how do you know what someone's stand is? Like, where um, can you go to get that? It would it would be better to go to Equality Texas's website and look at look up information there on their positions because I think that the postcard it's the postcard that's wrong, not the. Not the endorsements they've made or, or their information that they have there. So somebody clearly didn't double check this. R- right. Right. <laughs> so they, they've been hitting before they mailbox- sent this to the printer. They, it's been hitting mailboxes yesterday and today, and, and many people are very upset. I was upset when I saw it because I thought this isn't this can't be right. And so I contacted them, and they're mm. looking they're looking into it. There are, you know, the the board is is looking into it. Like what happened. So, wow. So we'll see see what comes of that. But just know that those question marks um, by those equality candidates are wrong. Well, I, I think in general, if you're on the fence, if you're truly on the fence about a candidate in the first place, you should probably go do a little homework. Yeah. Um, go to their website. I, I, every single candidate out there has a, has a website. Um, and yeah, just kind of do your own homework and just come to the conclusion yourself what they what they say they do or don't stand for. That's a, that's the best way to go. That's the best your, way to go. Do, do your, your homework. Research. Yeah, because it, it's out there. It's never it, it's never been easier before. You know, just just go look it up. Absolutely, and um, but most importantly, go vote. Go vote. Go vote. Get get your ballot. Mark your ballot. Make sure it's right. Go over your ballot. <laughs> <laughs> so we have how many more days? We have today and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And starting tomorrow through Friday mm-hmm. um, in Dallas County, those polls will be open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. And then there will be no voting Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. And then the election day is Tuesday. It's Tuesday. 
And vo- voting times for um, Tuesday? 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 7, 7. And, it, okay. and if you are in line at 7 p.m., you can still vote. Okay. So if you're, make sure you get in line. Make so sure if you, you had to line. work late or you got stuck in traffic, but you can skate in on two wheels and get in that line by 7 p.m., right. you can vote. You, you know, one thing, the one other thing I wanted to say is I, I know every, well, not every, but a lot of people have eight to five jobs. It's hard to get out and go vote. And sometimes I think uh, people are a- afraid to even ask their boss or their employer, you know what, all they can say is no. But ask, can you could have an extended lunch? Ask, can you leave a little early? They, they are required to let you vote. So, okay, so, there you go. So, so yeah, take advantage of that. Right. Um, I went after work, uh, but in past elections, I've asked my boss, and, and they let me. So, yeah, yeah, do what you got to do. Take, it's, a, get, it's your not only your civic right, it's mm-hmm. your responsibility. Right. Um, because, you know, if you don't. If you don't vote, somebody else is making decisions for you. Not the truth. And we don't want we don't want that to happen because sometimes they make really bad decisions. Really bad decisions. <laughs> and I always say, if you don't vote, you don't have the right to, you know what. <laughs> <laughs> so go vote, go vote. We're coming up on the end of the hour. Um, our next show is not here just yet, but well, so when I went to go vote. Um, it was, and again, it was the last day, or not the last day, the last day of the week of early voting. So I think the big crowds were already gone. It only took me about 20 minutes, which is really nice compared to some of the other people I've heard waiting like in over an hour. Um, you predict the same thing's going to be, is it going to be that heavy on the day of? Well, I'll tell you what, with that many voters moved in the first six days, mm-hmm. uh, for example, yesterday, 33,000 people in Dallas County voted. Wow. 33,000. We had beautiful weather. We did. The polls were open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. all over the county. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people chose to go vote. Um, and people are doing that today, this afternoon. The polls are open from 1 to 6 p.m. You can go vote. Um, and the same will be true um, Monday through Friday this coming week. The, the dip in the week last week mm-hmm. uh, or this past week was that day we had so much rain. We did, yeah. Uh, people didn't really turn out in the same numbers then. But if all of those, vo- all of those voters um, are moved mm-hmm. you know, through um, polling locations in early voting, then there won't be that many who can even vote on Tuesday. That's right. So we have a real opportunity uh, to have um, really deep saturation in terms of turnout, uh, something that's unheard of in Texas. Mm-hmm. We're always number 50. We're worse. I know. Um, we have a real opportunity to say, did almost everybody vote? Yeah. You know, we have, we're going to have, if we've passed presidential, our presidential record for early voting, six days, halfway through halfway early through. voting, you know. All right. Well, we need to take a station ID. All right, and we're back. This is Lambda Weekly. Uh, we are going to, I guess, keep hanging in here because our next show is not here just yet. So do we have a song to play? Yeah, we're actually going to take a little b- b- break. <laughs> 